How come look at this? There is no office in the Bible um, where God says to shut up, where he doesn't want you to preach the gospel as a daughter. Liar! That's a lie. Amen. How did the Apostle Paul feel about women trying to be church speakers? For it is a shame. It it's is what? a shame. Now. Women who pastor, women who preach in a church are a disgrace. Did God or Bible really permitted women that they can become pastors? Is there any scriptural acceptance or do we have female pastors? God's word says no. There is no such thing as a female pastor. There is a greater contention on the opinion that women cannot become leaders in a church or pastors is unbiblical and is not acceptable by God. Hallelujah. I contribute to the doctrine. Let your women keep silence in the church. And women who pastor, women who preach in a church are a disgrace. And there are other people who are equally with the opinion defending the fact that it's biblical and God often called women to become pastors. You know how many people I know don't listen to women preachers? That's half the population you refuse to listen to a word of God from. Verses 11 through 14, he does not mean that women must remain silent at all costs. He does not mean that women should just completely be silent in church and that they have no place in ministry. That's false because if it was true, Paul would not have written in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 that women are able to pray and prophesy. So which one is it? Don't believe what Pastor John MacArthur had to say about women who pastors mega churches in America and why it is dangerous for a Christian to sit under any woman who calls herself a pastor or a minister of the gospel. Leave your opinion under the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like the video and give us a subscription as we contend earnestly for God's kingdom, Jude 1 3. I'll be right back with Biblical Take on this particular subject. Shocking to you to know this, but in a survey conducted in 2017, about 80% of Americans are comfortable with a female pastor. 62% of practicing Christians are open to women pastors. 40% of evangelicals are fine with women pastors. In pastoral training, there's a degree, a graduate degree called a Master of Divinity. It's generally speaking a three or four year degree to prepare you for pastoral ministry. Fifty percent of women enrolled in seminaries, fifty percent of, I should say, MDiv students in seminaries are women preparing for pastoral ministry. Twenty-five percent of seminary faculties are women. That means you have women faculty members teaching women students to be pastors. 11% of seminary presidents are women, 27% of pastors across this country are women. This is an explosion. In 1960, 2% of clergy were women. The women's movement has basically just erupted in the church, and the last frontier for the movement is the evangelical church. The last frontier to fall victim to the rebellion of feminism along with cultural Marxism. Perhaps women pastors and women preachers are the most obvious evidence of churches rebelling against the Bible. I can't think of anything that's as far-reaching and transcends all denominations as the woman's rebellion against the Word of God with regard to women preachers. Women who pastor, women who preach in a church are a disgrace, and they openly reflect opposition to the clear command of the Word of God. This is flagrant disobedience. It has been acceptable in our culture and now acceptable even in the evangelical world. I read an article this week written by a woman. The title is, have M. Div will preach. And uh, this woman writing this article said uh, the article is designed to answer this question. How does sexism play a role as your congregation works to embrace the pastoral leadership of women? So if you're not willing to embrace the pastoral leadership of women, you're not biblical, you're sexist. 
Why is this such a far-reaching, vast rebellion against the Word of God? Why? Well, the answer comes all the way back in Genesis. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 up to the 14th verse, this is Apostle Paul writing to his beloved son Timothy, whom he had recruited for the work of the Lord. And in this same particular time, had made a custodian of a new church and had also entrusted to his care the people of God, that Timothy sees to it that they grow mightily in the work of God, that they become firm in the work of God, that they depopulate the kingdom of the enemy and then populate the kingdom of God as the work of every single pastor. But at the same time, Timothy was a younger minister. So Paul is writing to Timothy rules and regulations that governs the church of God, what is permitted in the house of God and what is not permitted. But in this particular passage, Paul was writing about how Timothy has to handle women, especially in the house of God and what we call the women ministry. So Paul writes giving Timothy guidelines, giving him laws, giving him regulations so that there will be peace and order in the house of God. You and I know and agree to the fact that in 2 Timothy chapter 16, in 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, For all scripture was given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and all training in righteousness, that a man of God be made perfectly well unto all good works. And so we know that by this time, Paul is writing to Timothy concerning women ministry in this passage I'm about to read to you. Definitely the Spirit of God is behind him or Paul is being inspired to write to Timothy the guidelines so that Timothy must not entertain any other misconduct in the house of God, but rather he must maintain peace and order in the house of God. So back to 1 Timothy chapter 11 and the verse 14, I read. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Verse 13, For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Verse 14, For Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived in transgressions. Now, if you look at the last chapter, which is the 14th verse, now Paul, who is writing to Timothy concerning rules and regulations about women, and even about the services that happens in the house of God and how it should go, now, he made mention of a situation or of an event that took place in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1, concerning how the serpent uh, beguiled the woman and the man to eat of the forbidden tree which God has spoken against. Now, and also draws attention to Timothy about the things that women must do in the house of God and the things that women must not do in the house of God. Apostle Peter is equally writing admonishing men on how to dwell with women in first peter chapter 3 verse 7 now peter is admonishing men how to live with women peacefully in marriage and then he tells he tells men that men must have proper knowledge and understanding on how to dwell with women because they are weaker vessels now so these are particular bible verses that the men of god are using as a buttress point to defend the fact that it is unbiblical this is not to say that God does not use women. You and I know about Sarah, the wife of Abraham, how God used her. We have heard about Deborah the prophetess, how God used her. We have heard about Hannah, how God used her. We have heard about Esther, who was Hadassah, how God used her. We have even heard about Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom God chose as a vessel to manifest himself through into the world as Christ the incarnated. We have heard about all these mighty women in the Bible. We have even heard about Mary the Magdalene, how God used women in the Bible. So this is not a debate or this is not a place where men of God are saying God does not use women. But the, the point they are stressing here is that women are physically weaker vessels, emotionally, when it comes about the things of God. Where Paul made reference to uh, 1 Timothy 2, 11 to the 14th verse, referring Timothy to what happened in the Garden of Eden, trying to tell Timothy that women are weaker vessels, so therefore Timothy shouldn't permit them to teach in the house of God, that women can easily be deceived or women can easily be manipulated by any form of wind of doctrine that easily comes around. 
And so Paul was warning Timothy about how that if he wants to see the house of God in order, that to progress and do the work of God mightily, to see it grow, then he must not permit women. And these are the instructions Paul the Apostle gave to women. But this is not to say women can't minister in the house of God or can't become pastors. According to them, women can become assistant pastors, but not head pastors or the head of mega churches. When you look at the side of Pastor John MacArthur, now he believes that the number one reason why Christianity in America is receiving a lot of persecutions and why people easily rebel against the church, rebel against the word of God and rebel against the church as a body of Christ is simply because of women that are becoming pastors in the United States of America. And he equally believes that women easily can dilute the word of God, they can twist the work of God and they can even add certain things which are not supposed to be. And according to Pastor John Mark Atta, he sees to it that this is the reason why many churches in America is collapsing and all this, you know, LGBT community, uh, Q+, who are rising against the church, rebelling against God and musicians and hip-hop artists, actors and actresses who have risen against the church, mocking God, mocking the church and mocking the activities of, 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 of the church is simply because of women pastors who are preaching to them. And that is the reason why many or 80% of the citizens of the United States of America prefer or are comfortable, are comfortable listening to women pastors because they lie to them a lot and they twist the gospel or even manipulate the work of God. And so, dear viewer, I will leave the rest to you. You can equally share your opinion with me and let me know what you think about this. Are they right or are they wrong? I will be right back again in God's giving time. This is Abel Global Prayers contending earnestly for God's kingdom. Leave your comment, like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification icon for more. Shalom.